cannot remember being more spiritually filled before I even got up to do my thing as we did today between the meditation that happened uh, at 1030 and then these prayers and inspirations and music. the music and right and Mark and everybody and it's just delightful. So um, we're going to start off with a joy song before we go into our message. Has anybody we're talking about movies? We're big movie people ourselves. Has anybody seen the movie The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel? Yeah. So that's one of our favorite movies. The young innkeeper, when anybody would, would complain to him, he was obviously a metaphysician, I believe. He may not have known it, but he was. And he would say, everything would be okay in the end. Yeah. And they would say, yes, but it's, it's not okay now. And he'd go, well, it must not be the end. <laughs> and I remember that, and it, it stayed with me. And I was, I was speaking, and every time I would get frustrated with life, Angelina or I would go, It'll be okay in the end. It's not okay now. It's not the end. It's another way of saying divine order or this too shall pass. And then one day I started singing it. And so the, uh, the words are, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. And because it was such a happy lyric, we decided to put a little island music to it. Uh -huh. So hopefully you will join us on this. Everything will be okay in the end. in this universe will ever last so if you're feeling low this too shall pass nothing in this universe will ever last so if you're feeling low this too shall pass because everything will be okay in the end if it's not okay it's not the end everything will be okay in the end if it's not okay and we're gonna sha la 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 sha la 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 sha la 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 Every happy song has to have some sha la 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 sha la 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 sha la 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 Even when the darkness seems to hide you away After every night a brand new day even when the darkness seems to hide your way After every night, a brand new day A brand new day A sunny Charlotte day Everything will be okay in the end If it's not okay, it's not the end Everything will be okay It's sha la 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 time. Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. Okay, here comes the tricky part, metaphysicians. Even when it all just seems to go your way, don't get attached. It's gonna change. Even when it all just seems to go your way No matter how many times you saw the secret It's still gonna change That's okay because Everything will be okay in the end If it's not okay, it's not the end Just the audience
All right, so we are so happy to be here today. And uh, today we're going to talk about one of our favorite things. And you've already kind of done a little of it, talking about what you're grateful for. So our talk today is called An Attitude of Gratitude. And we find that when we really go to gratitude in times of uh, always and enjoy and when we need it, it just brings us more uh, inner peace and joy. So we always like to start our day with saying, thank you, God, for this glorious day I am grateful for. And then just we go back and forth and saying what we're grateful for, kind of like what you did this morning. And then we learn from Alan Cohen, who is a motivational speaker and, and author. He says he likes to reflect on the joys of the day before he goes to bed. Again, it's a nice, great, peaceful, wonderful, joyous way just to take all that, all those great things of your day and, and just reflect on that. So I like that. You've just entered a place of love. A dimension beyond time. A dimension beyond space. Love is a boomerang. Okay, just one second. I'm having a challenge here. Oh, that works better. That song is itching to come on. And see, we're grateful for that, that time to reflect on why that was happening. Because strange things happen when you were in the heart light zone. You were in the heart light zone, yes. And in the heart light zone, we follow a different set of phenomena than the common world. In the common world, they are taught when you have something and you share it and you give it away, you end up with less. But in the heart light zone, we know that if you have something and you share it and you give it away, you end up with more. Spoken like true metaphysicians. <laughs> kind of like this ancient aboriginal tool known as... Boomerang. I like that. That was cool. I'm telling you, all kind of cool stuff's <laughs> happening to you. Now, the boomerang is supposed to go out and come back to you, right? Yeah. What do you call it if it doesn't come back? Broken. Broken, Broken oh, yeah. Yes. Or a stick. <laughs> However, spiritual law is never a stick. It's always a boomerang. Mm. We put out in the universe, always comes back to us, often mm. multiplied. So it's important to be mindful of what you're boomeranging out there mm. so you will get back what you desire. Mm. Okay? Now, one of the ways we do that is through the law of attraction. Imagining that the law of attraction is we put out, it comes back. I can sum up the law of attraction in four simple words. Love is a boomerang. Now, love is a boomerang. Everybody sing with me. Love is a boomerang. You give it away and it comes right free. Love is a boomerang. Hear the words that set you free. Love is a boomerang. Give it away and it comes right back. Love is a boomerang. Love is a boomerang. You give it away and it comes right back. Love is a boomerang. Love is a boomerang. Give it away and it comes right back. Listen, everybody. What's burning in my soul It's something you can use Gonna make you healthy, safe, and whole You can read it in the Bible It's in the golden rule You don't need to go to the land down under To find this tragic tool Because love is a boomerang So is money, so is kindness Love is a boomerang ha! Give it away, it's gonna go right back. Love is a boomerang So is anger, so is judgment Love is a boomerang Give it away and it comes right back When you wake up in the morning Try a different attitude Along with drinking coffee Fill yourself with gratitude Try loving everything you see It'll change the way you live There ain't no way to outgive God I guarantee you live me God. Love is a boomerang So is money, so is kindness Love is a boomerang Give it away, it's gonna come right back 
Today. Yeah. Yeah. So most of us metaphysicians have tried many different paths, and that's what I love about a place like this. We are all into inclusivity. Okay, we are inclusive philosophy versus an exclusive religion. Uh, so we, uh, we embrace all those religions. So I've heard this word omnism being used a lot lately, looking for truths and beauty in all the religions. You know, people say, what religion are you? I say, yes. You know? So Angeline and I were raised Catholic. We both went to Catholic high school. Um, actually, we're three quarters Catholic. <laughs> and then uh, I was talking to Reverend David, uh, got into Pentecostalism. And what I most loved about Pentecostalism is that's where I learned that uh, spirituality was not just Sunday mornings. And then when I got into metaphysics and new thought and all that, it was a reinstatement of that idea. I went through a long period of time where I didn't go anywhere. And then somebody told me about this church that's a unity church in Florida. And I said, I don't do church. And he said, this is the church for people that don't do church. <laughs> and I got a feeling y'all, a lot of y'all are the same way. And so I went and I heard my language. I heard it. I heard, I heard the energy that I had been involved with for many years as I was reaching out, but I couldn't find it in my traditional paths. But one thing that I missed when I started going to these other churches is I missed some of the enthusiasm from my Pentecostal church. And I thought, well, maybe one day I'll become an evangelic New Thought minister. <laughs> and I found out what that's called today. Reverend David taught me that. Yeah. That's called a Metacostal. <laughs> Brothers and sisters of the congregation, we are here today to raise consciousness. For we know there's only two emotions we really need to be concerned with in this world. The all-encompassing, empowering emotion of love. And it's apparent opposite fear. Ooh. Now, when you're in a state of love, it's a heavenly experience. But when you're in a place of, of fear, it's like being in hell. Now, it's a fiery pit. You probably never hear those words on this stage again, fiery pit. <laughs> but we also know, don't get nervous, there is actually no place called hell. Can I get an amen? Because some of y'all would have been going for show. But there is, <laughs> there is no place called hell, but there is a virtual hell, and that is the hell of fear-based thinking. Yeah. Who's been there? <laughs> Woo, it's no fun. It's no fun. So Angelina and I came from Orlando, Florida, with one purpose today, and that is to love the hell out of you. <laughs> and one of the ways we are going to love the hell out of you is sharing Angelina's beautiful voice and messages with you today. So she was playing something like that one day, and we were in Sedona, and I said, what's going on with you? And she said, God, I am so grateful right now. I just, I have that giddy bliss for that joy for no reason at all. I'm so grateful. And I said, you know, when you speak that, you bring more gratitude in the world, and it's like a prayer to God. But if you were to sing it, that'd be like praying twice. And she said, but... I had never written a song before. And I said, you're in good company. 
everyone that ever did anything absolutely fantastic had never done it before. So she's playing along with this little ode to joy from Beethoven, and I said, just sing what comes out of you, and this is what happened. I am grateful, oh, so grateful for the blessings in my life. I am grateful, oh, so grateful for the blessings in my life. Okay. Sorry. I am grateful, oh, so grateful for the blessings in my life. I am grateful, oh, so grateful for the blessings in my life. Thank you, Spirit. Spirit omnipresent in all things. I am grateful, oh, so grateful for the blessings in my life. Here we go. Okay, because we've been coming to Charlotte for, for a long, long time. And, and i got to tell you what I'm super grateful for right now. A lot of times, the minister and the music team take off when we're coming. I don't know if it's because they need time off or they don't know how to explain us to the audience. But either way, <laughs> it's a delightful to have to be work co-creating everything today. Uh, like I said, I feel so spiritually fed that, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful energy that doesn't typically happen. So thank you all, team. Okay. All right. So, first of all, sorry about that, Armand. I changed keys on you, and I didn't right. tell you, so I'm really we sorry. We learn to be flexible in life. Yes. Well, I have a, a story. Uh, years ago, I was at a Wendy's drive-through because I love French fries, and people tell me they're not good for me, and I shouldn't eat them, but I do love them, and I eat them. So anyway, I, I ordered at the window, and when, uh, when I got to the window, I asked the young man, how are you? And he answered with, I am grateful, mm. which really touched me. First of all, I wasn't expecting that from 18 to say something like that, but you know, what happened when I heard it, it brought me gratitude and made me think of gratitude. And I was just so inspired, I thought that was just really, really wonderful and amazing. So I encourage you the next time that someone says, how are you, to answer with, I am grateful. Thank you. How are you? I'm grateful. 
Now, I wish you could see your faces right now because it's almost impossible to say, I am grateful with a frown. I am, it doesn't work. I am grateful. It just brings it out of you. I'm sure those words and those, those letters and those sounds do that to you. There's something that they bring it out in you. And so I wish you could see yourself right now. By the way, of all you folks out there in cyber world, <clears throat> please give Reverend David a second chance and come back next week. Thank you. Okay. In case there's somebody new, you know, we're kind of a weird thing. If so I first think you should talk about a tool you came up with years ago. Okay. So years ago, when I first got into New Thought, I wanted to do everything right. And actually, even before I got into New Thought, I wanted to do everything kind of perfect. I had this idea that my goal was to get it perfect, and if I didn't do that, then I was a failure. Now, we can all think back in our childhood where we might have gotten some of those messages of perfectionism. And so I realized at one point, I can't do that. I can't be perfect. I just have to find a way to just keep getting better and be comfortable with that. So I thought, well, what if, what if I say a negative word or I think a negative thought or I do some kind of an action? It's okay. I think of it kind of like bowling. If you miss the, the who, any bowlers out here? If you miss the strike, you got another ball. Except with God, you have unlimited balls to keep throwing until you get it right. Angelina is my 13th long-term relationship. <laughs> But I finally got it right. 23 years ago, I finally got it right. I just kept picking up the ball and trying again, getting gutter balls. So I, re so I, I came up with this idea, or Spirit gave me this idea, and this rhymes with the movie Ratatouille, if you saw Ratatouille. This is a gratitude. And a gratitude is where you say, think, or do two wonderful things each time you missed the mark. You probably heard the old word for sin was actually an archery turn. It, it didn't mean you were going to hell. It meant you missed the mark. And you go, oh, I sinned. I'm going to straighten up and get it a little better next time. And we all have that. So a gratitude would be something like this. Uh, oh, my gosh. Oh, have you been on I-77 lately? This guy just cut me right off. And then I've, I'm complaining, so I've, I've lowered my vibration a little bit. And I'm grateful he didn't hit me. And I'm grateful I'm not in a car with her. <laughs> Either way. But you see what you've done? You've done two positive things. Or uh, you don't have this challenge now, but maybe in the summer. It is so hot. I can't believe how hot it is here. It's lowered my vibration. Complaining. Complaining always lowers your vibration. And I'm so grateful that my air conditioning is working. You know? And I'm so grateful that I'm not shoveling snow. <laughs> to me, your vibration is higher with those two gratitudes than it was before you complained because you're trumping it with an extra gratitude. So that's a gratitude. It's spelled G A R A T I, the letter two, and then E. Gratitude. So, any, so that takes all the pressure off of you. <clears throat> you no longer have to be perfect. Can I get an amen? Amen. Removing shame and guilt yes. by the minute. That's what we're all into. So let's see <laughs> what we got here. Do, 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 do. I think it is time for some more fun. I think so. Ready? What's that sound? <laughs> It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Welcome to Angelina and Armand's neighborhood. It's a special day. 
You may be wondering why I'm wearing this doctor's coat. Obviously, I'm not a real physician. I'm a metaphysician. A metacostal metaphysician. Sometimes I like to make fun and have fun with labels because labels are often used as a way to separate ourselves from other people. And so I just make all kinds of funny little labels up about myself. And so it just takes away the energy of I'm trying to separate, I'm now I'm trying to confuse. <laughs> So it's customary in Angelina and Armand's neighborhood to have a special word or phrase for the day. And our phrase today is affirmative prayer. Let's say that together. Affirmative, affirmative prayer. prayer. It's a special word. Now, a couple of things that made my head swim when I got into metaphysics just because I wasn't used to it. One of them was Father, Mother, God. I had never heard it said that way before. So I went, and then I went, duh. <laughs> makes more sense to have an inclusive God than just a masculine patriarchal kind of God, right? And so, but then when I heard affirmative prayer, my head kind of went a little crazy again. I said, wait a second. Affirming means you got it. Prayer means you ain't got it. I said, oxymoron, how do those two work together? Mm. Because here's how I was taught to pray. Dear God, out there with whom I have no contact or connection, <laughs> you have all the stuff I, I don't have enough of the stuff can I get some more stuff <laughs> it's like uh, it's like a kind of a begging you know it's, 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 it's different than affirmative prayer and then so and, and by the way that other prayer that I just did that works now and then that's called grace but it's not as empowering as affirming in advance Okay, and affirmative prayer involves a few things. Number one involves what we're talking about today, involves gratitude. An affirmative prayer may be like, I'm grateful for all these wonderful things that are going on for me right now. And then you go into your affirmative prayer, say, I know that it's coming to me. You know, getting the affirmative prayer in there and being grateful when you do it brings the energy to you in the moment, what John Lennon calls instant karma. Mm. You have the energy of whatever you're praying for okay, already there because you're already getting grateful for it in advance. So that's a really good place to start. But I was a little confused. See, I was one of these people, and it happens a lot of times when people first get into this kind of philosophy. They know the power of affirmation, so they'll put them all over their house. I spray-painted one of my vans with black spray paint, think love, create peace. I spray painted my wall. I am complete because I didn't feel like it, but I wanted to do the affirmative. You'll know a lot of New Thought people, when you first meet them, uh, all of there'll be little stickers all over their house with affirmations. There'll be things on their bathroom mirror. There'll be things on their refrigerator, like don't go in here ever. But you know, all, <laughs> but, but I was confused because I thought my job was to get those affirmations out so God would know what it is I desired. And then I remembered something from catechism. Before we even ask, God already knows. And I went, okay, I get it. So here's an example. Here's a, here's a prayer affirmation. Dear God, I desire to have more abundance in my life. And God goes, duh. <laughs> now, wouldn't an all-knowing, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent being be kind of in a state of duh? All the time? Already knowing? So then let's try another one. Dear God, I desire to attract my ideal romantic partner to share my love, my life, and my ministry with. And God says, duh. duh. <laughs> Where do you think you got the desire? Mm. Because even the word desire, your highest desires, the desires that are really who you want to be, the desires that are going to be good for you and the planet, all come from the part of you that's one with God. Even the word desire is da sire of the father or the father mother god to sire or da sire okay maybe not that that <laughs> can we edit that if that goes out like that part we're leaving that but anyway but yeah so my my prayers changed to affirmative prayers dear god with whom i'm totally connected i am in you and you are in me thank you for all the magical things that are in my life and the life of the people i love and the world Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is phenomenal. I have a list of things that I'm going to look forward to, and I'm putting it out here. 
I already know you know. I'm putting it out here. It's going to help me. But I still have a little challenge understanding why I need to do this if you already know. And God says, so you can get into alignment with what I already know. <laughs> I'm like, yo, you should use that. Anyway, so that was really powerful to me. So I'm getting in alignment to what you already know, God, by stating this affirmation and this prayer. And I also trust in the divine timing, if it doesn't come on my time, that everything comes when it's supposed to come and will be the right way. And I will start walking towards it without a particular timing expectation. Thank you, God, also for all the times that I wanted something to happen that didn't. I see the wisdom now. Like Angelina and I both had a prayer that we made 30 years ago for our first marriage to last forever. Thank God that didn't work. <laughs> because we wouldn't be together. God's timing. Sometimes it's a no. Because the part of you that is in alignment with God knows that's not your ideal place to be. Thank you. Thank you, God, for all of my blessings. Thank you, God, for my uh, for affirmation lists and for your divine timing. I trust in you. And so it is. Now, one of the things that, that bugs me is when people use the pulpit for self-promotion. I'd like to read something from my book. <laughs> this is called, I now pronounce you not guilty, this book. Uh, Faith in the system. Everything will be okay as soon as you are okay with everything. And that's the only time everything will be okay. That's Michael Singer, the author of The Untethered Soul. Faith, F-A-I-T-H, has been said to stand for feeling all right in the heart. F-A-I-T-H. Feeling all right in the heart doesn't mean we always understand everything. It doesn't mean that we don't get confused. It just means that we trust, as John Lennon said, everything will be okay in the end. Being confused is okay. Thinking that there is something wrong with us for being confused is the problem. As Byron Katie says, how do I know it was meant to happen that way? Because it happened that way. So I have one question for you before we turn it back over to the team. How are you? Grateful. And so it is. Thank you.